Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with a new Cinema 4D quick tip video on how to add textures to fillet caps of text and extrusion objects, as well as some more advanced techniques of if we want to really get in there and customize this stuff. So the first minute of this video will be answering the question if you were looking on Google of how to do this. And if you stick around past minute one or two, we'll get into some more advanced stuff that'll really help workflow and give you lots of tips. So I'll just hide these other two things and delete all these textures from this text. And essentially what I have here is just Motex saying text. And this could be Motex or it could be just extruded text right here. And the idea is that anything with a fillet cap. So if I go to object fillet cap, can have different textures for the fronts, the caps, and the back. And if you're just looking for the answer, this is it. This is what you want to use as R1, C1, R2, C2 in the tags that you put on the text. So I'll just get right started with this. I have just this text and under caps, there's fillet cap and a fillet cap for the back and the fillet type is two steps. And what you want to do is add on a texture. So let's say the front cap will be this red and under the tag, there's selection and you type in these big letters, R1, C1, R2, C2 for front and back cap. So if I do a C1, it's going to texture just the cap. So essentially we could have five textures is what we would want to do for the front cap. And then I'll drag another one on and do R1. And then that's going to be the front extrude. So if we wanted front cap, front extrude, and then back cap, let's, let's do a C2 on that one. And that'll be the back cap. And then this purple I'll drag on and do R2. And we have four textures and we want to have one more for the outsides. Cause right now this edge is not actually textured at all. This is just the default setting. And if we want to texture that we drag a texture on, but it needs to be before these other four. So if you drag it on the end, you can see it replaces this. And what's happening is it textures these sequentially. So you want the texture for the whole one and I'll just swap it out with black by holding option real quick, just to make a point so we can see what's happening. And what it's going to do is it's going to add this texture as the whole texture and then sequentially add the textures for the caps. And down here, I just have kind of basic textures of different colors with a basic reflection. And that's pretty much it just to talk through this. So if you're just Googling how to do this, that answers your question. But if you want to keep learning, let's take a look at something more complex like this, where in this case, this text is two steps and say, I want to texture each step separately or say that I have this text and I want different caps to have different colors and on the back they're flipping and it's not as straightforward. So if you want to do that, you got to stick around for some more advanced techniques and hopefully I hooked you in with texturing the caps and now we can get into some more complex and really cool stuff that isn't as simple as just adding C1, R1, C2, R2 but it is a good little tip to note. So let's get started. Let's go a little further. So as I mentioned, all I have in this document is this Motex that says text and a camera and lights. So to clean this document out, I'm just going to take my lights and my camera and this one Motex and I'll copy and then just do a new document and paste so I can have a clean scene from this and start from this text as a base. Now this is our basic text, but as I said, this Motex, our fillet type is two steps. So we could have linear, we could have anything, but say if we want to make this more specific and have more control over this, not just do the one cap on the front and back, but really take control of this. And th to do that, you really have to understand a little more of what's happening here and how to control it. So on this selection tag, essentially what's happening is cinema 40 is setting a selection of the cap and it has these four that are built in for this purpose, but you can make your own, which is, a really cool and powerful thing to be able to do beyond these basics. So to do that, what I want to do is I'm going to delete these textures and I did want a white one. And I didn't copy that in. So I'll just copy this one by holding command and just change this one to a white just so we have a bunch more textures. So now I have this text, but I want to have really a lot more control over texturing it. So I need to get into the polygons mode. So I'm going to turn on display lines to see exactly what I'm controlling. And if I want to have control over this, what I'm going to want to do is make this object editable and be able to pick apart the faces. 
But if I just do connect or press C over here, we end up with a bunch of extra stuff. And we don't want that. We just want one solid object. So what I can do is grab a connect object from up here and put the Motex in that. Or one quick little shortcut is if I'm on the Motex and I go to connect object and I hold option when I put it in, it's going to do that first step. And that puts it in a connect, but you can see that it gets kind of weird with the lighting. So before I make this editable in my connect object, I want to check two things. On this Motex, I want to make sure that my Fong angle is low enough so that I get enough subdivisions on the letter. So if it was too high by default at like eight, you can see it's going to be a little choppy. And if we take a look at this render from earlier, that's kind of what's happening. So we'd want to make sure to set that low enough. So we'll do something like three. So we get enough subdivisions. And the other thing is on the caps, we want to make sure our type is set to ngons, which you typically wouldn't want. But since we want to talk about things specifically like texturing just these caps, it's going to be a little easier to deal with. So to make this editable and get this started, what I'm going to do is press C on the connect and it's going to connect all of those. And then I'm going to grab all of my tags and delete. And to get rid of this bubbly looking issue, we can actually delete our Fong tag, which smooths that out. And then we get our text and it's an editable object. And we have just the caps as options to select. So to get this started, what we want to do is go into a polygons mode and we can see that we can then just grab these different caps as well as any other little polygon. So to get this process started and to talk through what's happening here with some more advanced selection tag techniques, what I can do is I'm going to click on one of the faces. And if I drag a texture on here, two things happen. It textures just that cap and it adds this selection tag for that selection. And I could keep going and do that this way to get all of those. But let's talk about what's happening here. And we can actually back up and create our own. So when I drag a texture, it's making this tag of polygon selection one. But what I can do and how this is working is I can save selections without doing that. So if I, for example, on this object, wanted the T and the X to be a selection, I can go to select set selection. Or an even better shortcut for anything is I can press shift C to get this command and type in set selection. And then I don't have to go up to the menus. And if I double click that, it saves this as a selection tag that I can rename. So I'll call this TX front. And now what happens is anytime I click off of that in faces, I can double click that tag to grab those. And if I drag a texture onto my connect, which is my text, now that's what I can type in this selection. So I don't have to do R1, C1. I can do anything that I make myself and add as a selection tag. So I can copy this and paste it to my selection. Then I have just the front of the T and the X. So now if we want to do the same thing for the front of the E and the T, I could just grab these and same thing, shift C and then type set selection, double click. I'll call this ET front. And again, now I have a tag that's saved with that selection that I can pull up at any time and I can shift these around if I want to organize them. And what I can do with these tags is double click them to restore. And if I'm on them, I can make updates. So say I actually want this TX front to contain the front of the T and the X in the back of the lowercase T and E. What I can do is then again, I'll just while this tag is highlighted, shift C set selection, double click. And it's going to update this selection so I can't update them. So understanding what these set selection tags is doing is really useful. And it's a good, more advanced tip going beyond just our basic question of how do I texture text caps? So now we can see that I didn't even update anything on the texture, but because this texture is saying set the selection to TX front and this tag is TX front, these things are linking. So I'll just do the same thing for this. EX, I'll double click that and then let's say we'll grab the back of the TX to get the kind of alternating ones and I'll drag this white texture on and then copy that name over from the tag. So the selection is ET front. And now I have a little more complex texturing of there's different letters and I'm going beyond just those built in ones a little more in a little more interesting way. And I can swap these out easily using other tricks. So say I wanted this red to instead be black. If I hold command and drag this on, I'm going to swap out that texture 
but keep all the tag information and same thing with the other one. I could easily swap these out and update them. And then I'm texturing not just the front caps, but the front caps individually. And we're really getting into understanding what's happening with these set selection tags. So then, like I said, at the basic one, if we just wanted the first call of everything that's not in a tag to be red, we could drag this red on and then just put it first before all the other textures and it's gonna do red and then everything else. And then we get separate elements. Now, since this is a two-step text, what if we wanna texture some of these bevels, but what if we want them separately? Well, we can use some additional techniques for selecting when we're in polygon mode on this connect. Rather than shift selecting, we can do the letter U and then L for loop. And now I'm getting loop selection so I can select everything I wanna add a new tag for. Or if I wanna have even more control over this and do this quickly, as we're just going through lots of tips with this, if I look in my front view, it's gonna make selecting these a lot easier because it's only gonna view this. So I can grab a bunch of these bevels from the front and shift select. And then now I have a bunch of bevels only on the front selected and I'll do shift C set selection, double click, and then I'll call this bevels one. And then now if I drag a texture on, same thing if I change the selection to bevels one, now I get just that inner bevel. So you can get a lot of control because we can keep going. We can again do UL and maybe I want on this text, this inner bevel to all be different. So it's blue here and then when it comes down for whatever reason, let's say, then this top one is white. Again, I'll just do UL and I can move it until I get the tops of those or I could have alternating and really go far. So I got two more selections and then again, shift C, set selection, double click, name this bevels two or whatever you want. And then I'll drag on this purple cause we'll just make this thing look totally ridiculous to make a point and then point the selection to bevels two and then it's only going to apply those textures to what we had as that selection. So you see now we have a little bit of purple where I selected. And what's great about this is we can use all of these together to do this work quickly and do lots of shortcuts. So again, if we wanted to update any of these selections, we could double click to get it back, update stuff. So we want this selection to maybe include this loop for whatever reason. We can do that and then shift C set selection, double click, and it's going to update that tag. Now we can see that we have black wherever I selected because that texture is being directed by this set selection tag. So that definitely answered the question of how do I texture caps? But more importantly, we got into a little more advanced stuff of understanding what's happening, what the set selection tag process is and how to use textures with custom selections that you can create on your own and combine set selection tags with texture tags and some quick little tricks by doing selections of polygon loops to really customize our texture, your extrudes. So I hope you learned some good tips, lots of good little Cinema 4D shortcuts. And as always, be sure to check out more of my tutorials and learn more about Cinema 4D and After Effects on the YouTube and Vimeo channels at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella and same thing on Vimeo and facebook.com slash vital if you want to request tutorials, ask questions, or interact that way. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you got your answer for how to texture text caps separately, and I hope I roped you into learning some more advanced techniques beyond that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.